Good morning. It's that coffee time. The morning drink. We're waking up. It's another day. I move forward. I'm the guy. I'm the solutionist. Now the image you're going to be looking at starting out here is, well, violence, obviously violence. Now I've had seven attempts by gunfire on me in the course of my life. <clears throat> this is something when you deal with where things are at are way beyond the little brush with destiny that convicted felon Trump had recently. Finally, he joins the club of those who've come under fire. Well, some of us know what action is like. And it's a different type of action when you come under fire in supposed peacetime and you have people that want to kill you. With me as a presidential candidate, I have 14 RVs that have been destroyed or stolen now. Mass dereliction of duty of Democrats, Republicans. Despicable works of Julie Sue. We have people committing treason. As a solutionist, I have an archive. Much of it is temporarily displaced now. It immediately needs to be recovered but still no cooperation, mass dereliction of duty, despite the fact of multiple entities having clear motives, multiple parties out there that evidence has, well, frankly, turned up repeatedly. State of California, zero investigations. Told that Russia is at large interfering with the process of elections, yet no investigations. Candidates like myself coming under heavy fire, but still we have the COVID, we have the emergency shutdown, stay in place orders. Which means I could not activate certain business features, certain nonprofit features because the attorney says they would fine me. The kind of fine you get comes with the mark. You'd get a black mark where basically you would be considered a threat to health and safety. That's a doomsday mark if you have a nonprofit. Attorney says you never want that. So obviously you have to comply. And you comply and you end up having the state of California owing you vast amounts of money. Then you're being blacklisted. Congress orders compensation, but the state won't comply. Julie Sue won't comply. $31 billion sent out to people with no identity, sending money outside the country while she created a program to blacklist people's phone numbers. The horror of people who'd worked hard being thrust into, well, basically losing their homes or on the verge of losing their homes. We have children kicked out of their homes, their toys thrown in the trash the tears, the despicable situation created by Julie Sue. Still we have 
no adequate cooperation from the state of California. Many notifications, many items sent to them under shield. Patient, generous opportunities afforded to them met with dereliction of duty. As I come under more violent and violent attacks, still, you inform them they don't care. They make ridiculous excuses, but the real truth brings shame upon the Democratic Party. Why is it that I'm an archiver, a solutionist, repeatedly coming under violent attack year after year, being threatened by police, even Secret Service, falsely arresting me, causing security problems and breaches, which led to mysterious break-ins as witnesses witnessed black RVs crowbarring into my campaign headquarters. My campaigns continue each season to come up and fight and fight with 14 RVs that were scheduled to begin their service on crowded highways a million people a day would have begun seeing that fleet. As I had arrangements with other parties who have unique talent in locating vehicles, I was going to obtain more than a hundred RVs. Basically, today, again, we have a deficit problem of seven to nine million people a day not seeing those RVs with my name on it. With those website indications. As again, you look at the image, what's in the image, we have violence, clear violence. We have theft of computers, destruction of computers, violent messaging. We have documents stolen, documents that have been destroyed, documents pertaining to the process of elections, documents pertaining to national security, data, drive stolen. again pertaining to national security, pertaining to high technology research. Layouts of plans and designs to work the tactical logic of the campaign and the items and categories that I have been working with for so long. The solutions that repair every citizen's wallet in this nation. Outlines and plans to negotiate new treaties with nations to get us the water that we needed, to address the fire problem to get water, to restore salmon, that four billion dollar a year industry lost as we went into World War II because of the emergency need for power and to control water. Today that's forty billion dollars a year. Salmon, forty billion a year. That's four hundred billion in ten years. It's a lot of money. Definitely a for profit item to restore the salmon industry. And there's a lot of creative ways to do that because we have AI engineering now that does fantastic things. We need the meat this is not a joke. We need the meat. We've got about six more years left to meet the current estimated mark point where we have to obtain 140 million cows. The current trajectory is going to have beef go to $80 a pound in six years if we don't do something about it. It's not an easy thing 
to deal with coming up with those kind of numbers. We're going to have to open our wallets, dig deep. We're going to have to back the ranchers. We're going to have to back the farmers. We have to fix this. There's no choice. I'm really sick and tired of seeing the, the memeism, the beauty contest. We have Democrats out there. They gave their all. They went into debt. They shared the problems. They needed compensation. Many of them feel abandoned. They've lost everything, yet they still have people calling them, asking them for money. But the promises of support, well, that disintegrated. Didn't happen. My system is a 24-7 service system. Government never closes. AIs get more and more sophisticated, personalized services. 70% of people's problems get handled with the AI before qualified personnel can help them with the rest. It's available 24-7. My policy, unlimited legal assistance for every American citizen. The amount of money owed to American citizens is mind-boggling. We have a hundred well we have 1.4 billion cyber attacks a day we have an FBI system that wants you to put your credit card in to explain the cyber attacks you're coming under when your phone doesn't work for three four five hours a day or your business those are cyber attacks it's called making a null zone, N-U-L-L, -L, null zone. People do that to control stocks. Ten trillion dollars a year in damages done in the United States and a likened number for Europe. Gray servers, black servers, those unidentified businesses that seem to be running millions of computers and nobody knows what they do. They could get the bill. See, we have other server companies. They operate under transparency. But others' companies don't. So we know where these attacks are coming from. We know that 80% of servers in this country are owned by members of the GOP. This is a fact. Oh, you can go split hairs all you want. You do exhaustive research and you figure it out. Been there, done that, already did that. So, if you ask yourself that the reality is, is that 80% of cyber attacks each day have an origin coming from the inside of the United States, what are the numbers? Which political association is responsible? Obviously with a far greater number of attacks. We have so many attacks of different types that are occurring, it's mind-boggling. So my system has a direct tax requirement on dark servers, not on transparent servers, and not on new startup people. I'm a realist. I like computers. I like AI. And I understand that people starting up, you're talking people got, you know, 5, 10, 20, 30 servers. These are not the people conducting the 1.4 billion cyber attacks a day. It's the big buildings with no name, the dark and gray server companies. Those are mass economic attacks, mass economic sabotage. It is defined by the Constitution of the United States as an item that comes with a mandatory death penalty as punishment. The wissiness of our government to fail to prosecute parties to the proper constitutional meaning 
is part of the reason we have had mass proliferation of cyber attacks and cyber weapon systems as they've abandoned the public. Their policy of having a secret back door into every chip and every system back during the, well, end of the Reagan administration going forward, well, it was a brilliant idea. Really, it was. It was a brilliant, brilliant idea. Uh, but they were told by technicians, hey, look, this is dated. This isn't going to work. They're going to figure out what's going on. These secret back doors will be found and they will be exploited and it will become a huge, huge problem for American citizens. A problem which that will cost more money to resolve per citizen than each citizen has. So when citizens are told they have to go it by themselves, they can't afford to do the ongoing, never-ending tricks and updates. In willingness to change to a new construction style and chips is, well, stupidity. As I'm the guy who has the answers, as my fleet of motorhomes showing up with 5,000 to 10,000 foot ranges of Wi-Fi with a drone fleet to help extend the range of Wi-Fi, to bring people into a tap that was going to be slated for is the most powerful AI system that citizens would ever tap into in the history of the world, the history of the world, with assistance for solutions they needed with their lives to repair their finances, to repair their wallets, a fight forward to be able to regain their own hands to be able to build homes again to get back in touch with the 480 homes that a 45-year work schedule should be producing asset-wise. 1750, the average 12 to 14-year-old was building, well, building their own home in less than six months. It was required. It was a simplistic skill set. Education is shot. So that 30 home productivity board foot equivalent for 1750 America people, 38 year longevity, now we're 78 year longevity. Modernized equipment, new techniques, power tools, wow. Yeah, that parlays out because as you get more, you parlay your situation. 480 homes, that's, that's, that's what an American citizen is worth as the most basic carpentry skill set. But we have people that are stuck in this endless deception, this endless lie, this endless fantasy, lying to people blatantly, telling them it's a dream that perhaps by retirement age that they would obtain a home insanity that's crazy when you can build with your own hands a two bedroom home in less than six months easy people have been ripped off of their lands it's very bad I talk about it in other podcasts. So I'm the solutionist and there's all this struggling. There's people that just don't want to deal with it. And they're not understanding. I've got 56 to $65 billion in other people's assets. Their businesses are instruments of crime. They participated in insurrection. These are just the people connected in one way or another primarily attacking me, my campaign, and the archive 
And of course, the people associated with that archive, billions and billions of dollars in damage. An additional $200 billion in notes, well, notes laid for $200 billion more in assets to be seized with the connectivity of other victims. We could be looking at $1.2 billion in seizures, and still we have Democrats being wussy and struggling, not understanding that I've got the 240 IQ, I'm the guy who's been working on solutions longer than anybody, I would say. And as far as being the guy that comes up with solutions, there's very few people out there actually come up with solutions. As it goes, there's a lot of people. But we have hundreds of millions of people in this country. Most of them are just hand to mouth. So moving forward with clear, clear charges of making arrests and seizures is the way to go. But Democrats are struggling. They're playing a meme game, a popularity contest. People feel like they're, as voters, people feel like they're going to a circus. Literally, people talk about this. They feel like they're going to a circus and they're being asked to vote on which clown is throwing peanuts out. It's a joke. Real hard asset growth, that's what you have with me. Guaranteed home completion. Guaranteed home loans. You don't have a job? Let me explain this to you. Under my administration, you are guaranteed to have a home loan because you get to go to work for yourself. There's your paycheck. That guarantees that you can make the payments. All labor is 100% bankable under my administration. You're disabled, or maybe you have children that are disabled. They need advocates. Well, the advocates can manage the construction project. And for those of you that need assistance, well, that's built into the loan cost. Guarantor completion bonding is also built into the loan cost. I have more than five major ways to set up five home constructions for each and every citizen in this country. A for-profit adventure. And the build is 70 cents on the dollar of the retail value. And the, and the federal government's going to print, print 30% the difference between wholesale to retail. They're going to print that in cash. That means their cut is 30%. This is the original way that, one of the original ways, that our, our country got a hold of money to operate government. No need for more taxes because the government's going to make far more money off of helping people be able to build homes by simply guaranteeing low-cost loans. Construction loans to anybody. Again, it doesn't matter even if you're not working. You don't have a job, that doesn't matter. You have a job now. What does that mean? Oh, that means you have more time available to build your home quicker. Let's get that hard asset built. The government's going to print 30% against the total value. That's what they've always done. This is the stimulus. It's the first step of many, many, many forward-moving stimulus items my administration will bring. I've also discovered many points of law. I don't necessarily need Congress to cooperate with my economic plan because part of it is enforcing legalism involving people who've had their civil rights violated, who've been burned, who've been robbed, and guarantee that they're going to have restoration. So yeah, I've got people throwing bullets at me. Yeah, I need to increase security. Yeah, this is a, a real problem with violence. So getting leaders to understand they need to stop the Mimi game, stop the beauty contest. 
understand this is about a job. This is about the job the American people need to do. And I'm the guy to do that job. Michael Crosby for POTUS 2024.